Every second, there is a man or a woman across the world that is in an abusive relationship. Sometimes, they don't know they're in an abusive relationship until it begins to get worse. The method violence has been around for years, and no one has put an end to it. I wanted to find out, if you love someone, why would you abuse them? Now, tell me, what is love? Love means when you can respect me, when you can trust me. Love for me, um, even as a young girl, uh, I learned this word called agape. So love is unconditional. Domestic violence is someone that's basically that's trying to gain power and control over you. So it could be emotionally, verbally, um, mental, and physical. Really, the, the main issues in domestic violence are when someone tries to have more power and more control over the other person. The types of domestic violence would be emotionally, um, somebody emotionally trying to play with your mind, trying to play mind games, manipulating you. So using money to make someone do something that they don't want to do, or telling them that they will take money away from them, or not allow them to have a phone, or see their friends, or just different ways like that. Well, I stayed with him 20-something years. I have teeth missing. Um, we've had a lot of times outside where he would hit me or in front of my children, you know, choking. Verbally is putting you down, degrading you, name calling, mental, again, it's just playing these mind games with you, trying to manipulate you to do things that you may not want to do. But he did um, use a lot of words to make me feel really bad. It starts as the honeymoon phase. We know oh, in a relationship, everything's all good. You're not arguing. You're getting to know that person. Perhaps they're bringing, perhaps they're bringing you candy, cookies, flowers, or whatever. It was a constant cycle. Um, but if he got mad, or you know, it took something to um, for it to start. The cycle of abuse usually starts out with um, the the violence slowly escalating to a point where it explodes, it comes to a head, and there's some sort of violent event. And before I knew it, he, he hit me. I was about 18. And it came out, it came so quick, you know, I didn't even see it coming. And I was really stunned, I was really hurt. Um, and then there's what's called the honeymoon period or the makeup period, where both sides kind of come back to a stable place. Maybe the perpetrator says that they're sorry and they didn't mean to do what they did. I forgave him because he said it was a uh, reaction because he thought I was talking smart or something to that nature. That was my first clue. You're not going to always stay in that honeymoon phase. phase. You're going to always have ups and downs, but it's how you handle it. So now the cycle of abuse, it goes from honeymoon phase to tension building to abuse. So there's one particular time he came home and I had the two children and he found a noodle on the floor. And that caused me to get, you know, um, beat because he said, he knew that something had to be going on, that it was a noodle on the floor. That's how extreme it was at some times. Domestic violence has been close to my family since I was like 10. I used to hear bumping and screaming of loud noises, saying, stop! Or I used to see my mom sometimes try to break it up. I thought domestic violence was only worse in African American families. While making this film, I realized domestic violence happens to any race, any gender male or female, and it happens across the world as well. But when talking about domestic violence, I do believe the statistics show that African Americans are more likely to be in a domestic violence situation opposed to any other race. However, do I personally think that's true? No, I just think it's more talked about in the African American community. In some of the studies that, that I went through, one of the groups that we focused on is a group that Generally speaking, people don't necessarily think there would be domestic violence in it, and it was rich people. So you would think that, you know, they have all of their problems solved, they have, you know, all the money that they need, they don't have anything, and it was 
dozens and dozens of instances where people were abused in those relationships. But it does not matter. Domestic violence does not have color nor race. So it affects all people. It doesn't matter if you're rich, poor, black, white, heterosexual, lesbian, gay. It does not matter. It affects all of us. I think it's just a learned behavior. I think an abuser, if they are an abuser, they were going to hit you or degrade you, put you down, name calling you, whether they're on drugs or alcohol. Does I, Do I think it affects the situation? Yes, because that person is not in their right mind. However, take out the drug and the alcohol, I think if they were gonna hit you, they were gonna hit you anyway, whether they were under the influence or not. It's like pouring gasoline on a fire. There's most likely already violence in the relationship. And if you add drugs or alcohol to it, it's like the violence is the fire and the alcohol and the drugs is the gasoline. It just makes it worse. So I had an uncle, you know, used to play and put us under sheets and in closets, all the, you know, children. And he was always playing, but I, it really took effect on me because I became a little bit claustrophobic. And so he would play mental games like that, you know, um, wake me up in the middle of the night in the dark. Um, you hear me talking? If I answered, if I answered and said something to him, then I would be wrong and probably get hit. Some children who witness abuse or experience abuse, they um, can learn that as, as a behavior, as a way to um, behave in relationships going forward, but they can also learn from that and about what they don't want to have happen, um, especially if it was, you know, overwhelmingly traumatic for them. You know, at a very young age, men are taught not to show how they feel. Um, you always see men hitting boys in the chest and saying, man up, taking away how they feel. Boy, little boys at an early age are not allowed to um, say what they feel, be emotional. So instantly when a man specifically see a little boy cry, they'll hit him in the chest and say, man up, don't cry. So at a young age, you're taking away how that man feel. The statistics will say that over 80% of the perpetrators in domestic violence relationships are male. The difficult part with that statistic is that culturally speaking, it's really hard for men to admit to being a victim of domestic violence. And it doesn't matter if it's man or a woman. Eventually, when you hold so much in here, because you are taught that you cannot express how you feel, eventually you're going to pop, you're gonna explode. That's why it's always good to communicate with your partner and tell them how you feel and not hold it in. So I, I think that trigger anybody to become an abuser, not being able to say how you feel. Um, I have teeth missing. Um, we've had a lot of times outside where he would hit me or in front of my children, you know, choking. Um, I lived in California. I um, slept behind garbage cans just to prevent things from happening. The reasons why people stay in unhealthy relationships or abusive relationships, there's like multiple reasons. One could be you love that person. We know it, I can easily, Jasmine, tell you if you're in an unhealthy relationship to get out of it. But that's not even being real. If you love that person, it's going to be hard for you to say, I'm going to walk away. What if you got kids by that person? It's going to be even harder for a person to walk away that have children. Well, like I said, for me, I did it for certain reasons, because of love, because of family, because people told me, you know, some people said, you know, that he could change. There may be uh, retribution maybe some kind of retaliation that happens that um, will make things worse. And most of all, you are afraid to leave because we know once you leave, that means you're trying to say, you're taking back your power and control. You're telling your abuser, you can't control me anymore. I'm taking back my power. And we know most likely when you're trying to leave, is most likely when that, the perpetrator is most likely is going to try to kill you. When I started to think about all the things that had happened, 
And so I started to just build a lot of faith, like this is right, this is good for me. People shouldn't wait that long, you know. Um, you know, girls shouldn't, you know, cause, because now, like I said differently, it ends up a lot different, you know, like people are, sh you know, shot and people, they, they die. I didn't die in it. And I thank God for that. I didn't die in it, but I am much stronger than I was. I think society needs to address domestic violence on multiple fronts all at once. And I think the one big thing that's missing is that we socialize our male children away from emotions. We also socialize our male children to be physically violent with each other. Stand up, talk about it. You know, let, um, stop saying this is a personal issue. Like we hear that all the time. Young people would say, well, that's not my issue. Well, she got beat up, he got beat up. It's everybody issue. I mean, addressing perpetrators, addressing substance use, addressing community mental health, these are all fronts on which we need to look at the issue of domestic violence. Society can prevent domestic violence by speaking out, lend a hand to help a person who's trying to overcome a abusive relationship. Get involved more with people who's in an abusive relationship. Help them remove themselves from the situation. We can make a difference.